Once a thriving economic powerhouse known for innovation and industrial prowess, Italy is now on the brink of a major economic crisis. From its heyday in the 1950s and 1960s, marked by prosperity and growth, Italy now faces a harsh reality of declining economic growth, a dwindling population, a plummeting birth rate, a worrying debt-to-GDP ratio of over 140%, and a seemingly uncontrollable talent drain as thousands of skilled workers leave the country every year. This dramatic shift brings about the question, how did Italy's once thriving economy get to this point? To fully understand the depth of this crisis, we must first embark on a journey through Italy's economic history and explore the factors that made Italy a powerhouse in the first place, and then uncover the pivotal events that led to its current decline. Stay tuned to find out all of this and more and please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more videos like this. Without further ado, let's get right into it. History reveals the current situation isn't exactly new for Italy, as its economic trajectory has been a tale of remarkable highs followed by concerning decline. In the mid-20th century, following the devastation of World War II, Italy's economy experienced a period known as the Italian Economic Miracle. This period was fueled by innovation, massive investments in the manufacturing sector, and the vital aid of the Marshall Plan from the US. This rapid growth propelled Italy to the forefront of Europe's industrial landscape, securing its position as the continent's most powerful industrial economy. By the 1960s, Italy boasted a robust manufacturing industry valued at a staggering $319 billion, employing a thriving workforce of 40 million. This period of prosperity, however, masked a hidden threat, a steadily declining birth rate that steadily dropped from two and a half children per woman in the 1960s to its current low level of about 1.2. This demographic shift, coupled with other factors like an aging population, a significant brain drain, and inflexible labor regulations gradually eroded Italy's productivity, a crucial engine of economic growth. By 2019, Italy's productivity had plummeted by 13.7% over five decades, significantly impacting its overall economic performance. Additionally, the country faced a concerning debt-to-GDP ratio of about 140%. But what has caused Italy's once-thriving economy to fall on such hard times? Three words, low fertility rate. This single factor has had a cascading effect on Italy's economy driving a demographic shift and intensifying other challenges. The fertility rate of a country is a strong determinant in its demographic breakdown, and its demography is a significant factor that contributes to the growth of its economy. Right now, the country's economy is declining as its demographic collapse is going on in full swing, and it all ties back to its extremely low fertility rates. From a fertility rate of about 2.5 births per woman in the 1960s and 70s, Italy now has a birth rate of 1.24 births per woman which is low compared to the replacement threshold of 2.1 needed for a population to remain stable. According to stats, Italy recorded a new historic low birth record of about 400,000 in 2022, which is pretty low considering it has a population of approximately 59 million. To understand how bad this really is for Italy, let's give it some context. For a country to have a growing economy, it must have a demographic breakdown concentrated on lower and middle-aged groups which means a strong workforce and a potential for economic growth. However, for Italy, its demographic is concentrated on the elderly generation, meaning there are less people of working age relative to the larger non-productive population, or simply put, pensioners. And with the amount of births per woman declining, this means Italy's workforce is continually shrinking. Put all these together, and you have a country with a steadily declining economy overall, because there are fewer people who can contribute productively to the growth of the economy. Thinking about it, the current demographic crisis, characterized by low fertility rates and an aging population, is a relatively new phenomenon for Italy and was non-existent at a time. The question is, what has changed over time? Well, in the early 20th century, large families were not only the norm, but also a necessity. With a predominantly agrarian economy, marriage formed the bedrock of the Italian society and children served as assets, contributing to the family's livelihood and providing essential labor. This economic incentive, coupled with the strong influence of the Catholic Church, promoting large families. Besides that, raising a large family in those days earned people a certain level of social status. However, the post-war period ushered in a new era. 
As Italy transitioned from an agrarian society to an industrialized one, the need for large families in this society gradually diminished, replaced by factories and machines. Simultaneously, the rise of individualism and the pursuit of personal aspirations began to reshape societal values. For example, the newfound empowerment for feminism over the years has led to delays in marriage and childbearing as women prioritize their personal goals and ambitions. Traditional family structures began to loosen, paving the way for alternative lifestyles and cohabitation. Also, the influence of the Catholic Church, which once played a significant role in promoting large families, began to decline as people, including families, began to tilt more towards secularism. These changes in Italy's social, cultural, and religious norms have all contributed to Italy's current demographic crisis. Further complicating the situation of low fertility in Italy, especially in today's modern world, is the issue of stagnant wages. According to stats, over a 20-year period from 1999, the income of the average Italian is now 10% less than the average income in a Eurozone country. To put that into perspective, the average citizen in Slovenia now earns 25% more than 20 years ago. Although this same issue of stagnant wages has been going on in other Eurozone countries for many years, Italy's fall has been the biggest. This situation has led to less people being able to afford to have more than one or two children or even want to have any at all. For us to better understand the situation, it costs an estimate of 175,000 euros on a single child, from birth to adulthood. Compared to the average annual income of 30,000 euros, you really can't blame people for not wanting to have large families. And as Pope Francis aptly stated, starting a family is a titanic effort, something only the rich can afford. We already discussed the fertility crisis and the demographic collapse of Italy. What we haven't really talked about is how it's affecting their tax revenue and simultaneously tax rates. You see, Italy's demography inevitably means they won't generate enough tax revenue and the reason is simple. The elderly population obviously can't contribute as much tax revenue to the economy as the younger working age population. And considering the current demography of the country, this is a huge problem for the Italian government. To complicate matters more, although these elderly aren't contributing much into the economy in terms of tax revenue, they cost a lot in terms of health care and pension payments. The situation already puts a massive strain on Italy's national budget, as the country already spends a significant part of its budget in financing pensions and health care for the elderly. In fact, the welfare payments for the elderly in the country accounts for about 18.8% of its GDP, and as the demographic collapse continues in the country, this figure is likely to increase. Another notable mention in the issues that have contributed to the decline of Italy's economy is their concerning level of debt. Even though it's no news that governments receive loans to help improve their economy, the situation in Italy makes this a bit of a concern. With a debt-to-GDP ratio of 140%, one of the highest in the Eurozone, the country's debt far surpasses its annual economic output. Their growing debt level has even raised justifiable concerns amongst the European Commission, which have stated their intent to launch disciplinary steps over their growing debt. This level of debt is really crippling its economy, making it more difficult for it to make a recovery from its woes. Another significant issue contributing to the crisis in Italy is the issue of the brain drain going on in the country. Talented individuals seeking better prospects and pay abroad due to limited opportunities at home further hollow out the region's skilled workforce. And it's no surprise this is happening as Italy's weakened economy offers even fewer opportunities for young people. As these bright minds leave Italy, taking their skills and potential contributions with them, it fuels the talent drain that's crucial for Italy's economic growth. With the current demography of the country, high level of skilled youths leaving the country and the constant decline in labor force, and the extremely low birth rate, it's difficult to see how Italy's economy can recover from this crisis. In an ambitious attempt to reform Italy's economy, Prime Minister George Maloney's government has undertaken significant steps to reducing government spending and boosting revenue by 2028. Among her controversial moves was the overhaul of the welfare state, which was initially met with criticism as many citizens kicked against having their welfare payments cut. Simultaneously, Maloney has been making moves to address Italy's plummeting birth rates by providing more support to families. Parents get a 50% increase in baby bonus checks they receive the first year after the birth of a child, and families with more than three children now get a 50% increase for three years. Also for women who intend to extend their maternity for an extra month still get to receive 80% of their salary, rather than the 30% they initially received, making workplaces more family-friendly. Despite Maloney's efforts to boost birth rates and manage money better, Italy still struggles with fewer births. 
As can be seen in other countries with similar family-friendly policies, these policies haven't exactly solved these problems, showing that fixing these issues might take more time than expected. In summary, it's obvious that Italy is in some major trouble as its economy continues to decline with its low fertility rate and demographics as major causes. Unfortunately, we now have a highly indebted country with a declining economic output and puts a significant amount of their GDP into the welfare and pensions of the aged population of the country, which continues to rise, while the young population of the country needed to sustain the economy of the country continues to decline. If this trend continues, it's safe to say that Italy's economic woes are only just starting, and there's a high chance this might be its biggest economic crisis ever.